Hi everybody and welcome to our question time. Today I would like to talk about cover letters and how to write one. Writing a cover letter can feel daunting for authors, especially if it's your first time. What should I write? How long it should be? In reality, things are much simpler. Publishers will also specify what they'd like to see in a submission on their submission page on the website. Today, I will give you a basic structure in four points so you can use it next time you submit. And I will tell you exactly what each part implies or means. So let's start. The essentials. Part one. Dear dot dot dot. So the first point here would be Try to find out the name of the editor if you can. Generally speaking, literary magazine, sci-fi magazine, speculative magazine, they will all have a list of editors. So to actually find the right name shouldn't be too hard. When you're writing to a publishing house, I understand that it's not always easy to find one particular name. And therefore, addressing the letter to the senior editor or the editor or the editorial team is, of course, uh, perfectly acceptable. Interestingly, I get called Luna a lot, as in Dear Luna, and it makes me feel like Indiana Jones. I don't know if you remember, but in The Last Crusade, his dad says to him, your name is Junior. It was your dog that was called Indiana. So it is my dog that is called Luna, who is named after the press, Luna Press, Luna Space Beagle. So yes, there is no one called Luna that works at Luna Press Publishing, just so you know. <laughs> Point number two, the second paragraph. It should go something like, please accept my novel novella collection story for your consideration, or I hope you will consider publishing my, or I would like to offer for your consideration, or finally, I would be very grateful if you would consider. What all of these expressions have in common is, of course, uh, consider or consideration. Essentially, you are asking us to consider what you've done. So it's really coming down to very basic manners. And that is really something that can never go amiss. Point number three, this is where you insert the requests which are specified in the publisher's uh, submission page. So that means that you need to look at that submission page and literally follow the guidelines of what is requested of you. So let's take, for example, the page from the Luna Press website. We have submissions coming up in June for novels and collections. So the first part tells you who is this opening for, what to submit, what genre, what audience, when to submit and the time. It also tells you that your email should be titled novel submissions followed by your surname. And here is the kicker what to include in the main body of the email. A brief author bio with particular focus on your writing. So this is really just about what you have written so far. And don't panic if it is your first time submitting. We're going to be talking about this a little bit more in point four. Title of the novel, genre of the novel, word count, and one pitch. Now, there are ways and ways of writing a pitch, and we do have a video for that, so you can also check that later on. And then we move on to point four, the last essential point. This paragraph generally starts with, my work has appeared in, and here is your chance to basically tell the editor about your writing experience. Or you could be saying, I am a new author and this is my first submission. Believe me, that is not, absolutely not, a drawback. Every single author out there, authors you know and love, have been unpublished at some point in their life. So please don't panic because this is perfectly normal and natural. Or I have self-published experience. So to recap, let me give you an example of a cover letter following these four basic points.
Obviously, every publisher will be looking for slightly different things, but generally speaking, at that initial stage, most publishers are after the same kind of information. And certainly, they are not after a press release. Please remember, there is a difference between, uh, you know, asking someone to consider your work uh, and uh, literally emailing them a press release to tell them how amazing it is, okay? The second thing is that uh, I personally would never reject someone just because there is a typo in the cover letter. These things can happen. Obviously, if the entire email or letter is completely peppered with grammatical errors, well, it's going to tell me a couple of things. First of all, it shows carelessness. But secondly, it's going to make me think, okay, so if this is the state of the cover letter, what is the manuscript going to look like? After all, the job of an editorial team is not to rewrite the book. It's simply not possible. But most importantly, it's not fair, because if an editor has to rewrite a book, then suddenly the author's original voice is no longer there. So, in conclusion, don't let a cover letter scare you. It's just a set of information that we need to know when considering your manuscript. I hope this basic structure can be of some help, and of course, always check the guidelines on the publisher's submission page. And remember, ultimately, it's your story that will do all the talking. Thank you. Bye.